When people say I'm going to vacation to France, 90% of the time they mean Paris. And why not? I mean, I get it. You know, the place has a lot to offer. You know, beautiful landmarks, beautiful monuments, incredible restaurants, me. But that's far from being the only destination in France. And actually, in some cases, avoiding Paris might actually be the best plan if you want to avoid what's known as the Paris Syndrome. Yes, that's a real thing. A term coined by a Japanese psychiatrist named Hiroaki Ota in the 1980s, the Paris Syndrome is essentially just a severe form of culture shock that can lead to hallucinations, feelings of persecution, derealization, anxiety, depersonalization. The Japanese embassy in Paris actually has a 24-hour emergency hotline for those suffering from genuine symptoms of shock related to travel trauma. This syndrome is essentially the consequence of people hyping up Paris to the point where when they get there and see an actual rat instead of a rat chef, they freak out. And understandably so. But yeah, Paris may not be for everyone. Now, before we get into all the other amazing places we can travel to in France, which is the topic of this video, if, if that wasn't clear, this isn't just a video where I trash Paris. I feel like that wasn't clear at all. Let's look at how we would actually get around in France. And the most common way would be by train. Now, having grown up in California, the train wasn't something I was used to taking at all. It was either a plane or a very, very long road trip in our Toyota Sienna. I actually remember the first time I took the TGV, train à grande vitesse, which translates to train of great speed when I was young and it absolutely blew my mind. The convenience of it all and just flying by beautiful French landscapes at close to 200 miles per hour was just, mm, I fell in love with it. Interestingly enough, and I actually only looked into this while making this video, my great grandfather, Henri Lartieu, was apparently a legend in the world of French railroads because of his work, Géographie des Chemins de Fer Français, or the geography of French railroads. Apparently, in the world of trains and railroads, a common phrase that could be said is, check the Lartieu, like someone saying, check the dictionary. So I guess you could say I got some trains in my veins. But anyways, yeah, that's mainly how people get around. And not only France, but in most of Europe. The TGV connects major cities such as Paris, Lyon, Marseille, Bordeaux, and Strasbourg, allowing you to cover long distances quickly. But before you get on one of these TGVs, know that there are certain train etiquettes that you should know about, even if they aren't always respected. The first thing to know, and this is actually not common knowledge at all in France, is that kissing on a train platform is illegal. This law was implemented to prevent delays and ensure that train departures are not disrupted by affectionate farewells. How long are people kissing that it delays a train? Yes, that's why they call it French kissing. <laughs> Goodbye, my love. Sir, you are under arrest. Wait, why? What did I do? I saw you two kissing. There is no kissing on the platform. Sir, no. I, I won't see her again for months. I mean, wouldn't you do the same? I don't know. I, I, I haven't kissed anyone in a very long time, you know? I'm so lonely. Oh, I'm sorry. Come here. No hugging on the platform! Another important rule is no talking on the phone in trains. Now, I always thought this rule was weird because, I mean, talking on the train is allowed, so why couldn't you talk over the phone? But apparently, overhearing conversations where you only hear one side of it is much more disruptive as your brain is constantly trying to fill in the blanks. Listen to me carefully. You just grab it and you tightly squeeze. You could put a knife in it. And then you just throw it out and you make sure you clean it thoroughly. All right, perfect, yeah, we're almost there. I'll be in the kitchen in like 20 minutes. Oh, that makes sense. One last thing about traveling in France is tardiness. And this is actually for people who are traveling with French people. Let's just say that the French can sometimes be blasé about punctuality. While in many countries it can be considered rude, in France it's an unspoken rule and can happen pretty often. Hey, what the hell? You're like 25 minutes late. What? No, I'm not. Uh, can I have an espresso, please? It's 10.55. We said we'd meet at 10.30. If we said 10.30 and it's 10.55, then I'm early. <laughs> what kind of logic is that? That's how we do it in France. Never arrive at the time where we tell you to arrive. So why don't we just say we'd meet at 11 so you'd be on time? No, if we said 11, then I would be arriving 30 minutes from now, you see. Where is my coffee? I am sick of waiting. What? Now that you know how to travel in France, here's where to go. France consistently ranks as the most visited country globally, attracting millions of tourists each year. Let's take a look at some of the most popular regions of France known for their distinct attractions. In southeastern France, bordering Italy and the Mediterranean Sea, the Provence region is famous for its picturesque landscapes, lavender fields, vineyards, and charming villages. Provence is unique in that it has 300 days of sun a year. So if you're a vampire, 
because you'll probably want to avoid it. In fact, Provence has more sun than Miami or LA in any given year. Vincent van Gogh spent a significant portion of his life in Provence, particularly in Arles and Saint-Rémy-de-Provence. Many of his iconic works, such as Starry Night and Sunflowers, were inspired by the landscapes and the light of Provence. If you're in the Camargue region of Provence and you find yourself seeing wild white horses running in the distance, don't worry, you haven't been drinking dodgy French wine. These horses are real. The famous Camargue wild horses have their home here and are often seen roaming the marshes of salt flats. So Provence has you covered for all things lavender, sunshine, and wild horses. But let's explore another slightly colder side of French vacationing. Chamonix Mont Blanc, often referred to simply as Chamonix, is an iconic ski resort located near Mont Blanc, the highest peak in the Alps. Chamonix is renowned for its challenging slopes and stunning mountain scenery, and it actually hosted the very first Winter Olympics in 1924, which is another big draw for winter sports enthusiasts. Growing up, I'd only ever skied in California, so discovering the Mont Blanc these past couple of years has been Challenging. Chamonix is also the starting point for the Haute Route, a famous high mountain trek route that traverses the Alps and connects Chamonix to Zermatt in Switzerland. For an even more unique winter adventure, you can stay in an ice hotel in the French Alps. These temporary structures are rebuilt each year with ice and snow, offering a unique and chilly experience. Now, if snow, ice, and après ski bars aren't your thing, don't worry, France will undoubtedly have what you want. If delicious cuisine is what you're looking for, Normandy is the place to go, especially if you're craving camembert cheese and apple-based dishes. Or if you'd prefer to pick your own food, you can join a guided mushroom foraging tour in the countryside. Here, you can learn about the region's diverse flora and edible mushrooms, not the ones that just the regular, regular mushrooms. Normandy also provides history lovers and extreme adventurers a unique experience with a simulated D-Day paratrooper jump at the Airborne Museum in Sainte-Mère-Église. The museum is located in a town that played a significant role in the D-Day landings in World War II. Oh man, I am so ready for a vacation right now. What are you doing this summer? I'm doing a World War II simulation to know what it's like to face my own mortality. Now, if an amazing city break is what you need, France has also got you. Cities across France are rich with cultural heritage, iconic landmarks, and vibrant atmospheres. And of course, we can't talk about French cities without at least mentioning Paris. Say the line, Bart. Paris. Yeah! In Paris alone, you can visit the Eiffel Tower, the Moulin Rouge, Notre Dame de Paris, and the Louvre. That's more than enough to satisfy your needs over a weekend. But if not, there is so much more to see. So, whether you're into laying on the beach, skiing across the crisp snow on the Alps, skiing across the crisp snow, skiing across the crisp snow, or enjoying the sights and sounds of the city, France has got it all. Now, you might be thinking, if France is so great, where do French people take their vacations? Well, a staggering 80% of French people opt to spend their summer break in France, probably because it's cheaper, but also literally everything I just said. So, let's check out some popular holiday destinations within France that attract French locals. Côte d'Azur, or the French Riviera, is known for the glamorous resorts, beautiful beaches, and Mediterranean climate. Cities like Cannes, Saint-Tropez, or even Nice, which is pretty nice, that was lame, are often frequented by French vacationers. Now on to Alsace with its distinctive half-timbered houses, vineyards, and charming towns like Strasbourg and Colmar. Alsace offers a unique blend of French and German influences. Of course, many love to stay in the chateau. That's castle to you and I. France is home to numerous chateaus with many converted into hotels or guest houses providing a luxurious and historic getaway. Where you feel like a king or a queen. Now, for those of you who prefer their vacations a little more unusual, check out these unique attractions popular in France. In the Bordeaux region, some vineyards offer unique accommodations where you can sleep in a converted wine barrel surrounded by vineyards. No licking the walls though. Located in the Auvergne region, Volcania is a theme park dedicated to volcanoes and geology, where visitors can experience simulated eruptions, explore interactive exhibits, and learn about the Earth's geological forces in a fun and educational way. The Catacombs of Paris is an underground ossuary containing the remains of over six million people arranged in a macabre yet organized fashion. Very French. It's a unique and somewhat eerie historical site. Not quite cocktails on the Alps, but 
to each their own. Also, very much like Disneyland Paris, don't go there if long lines scare you. I have been here for three years and have not had the courage to step into that line. Frighteningly long. Now, Paris isn't done with the weirdness yet. The Museum of Vampires and Legendary Creatures, Musée des Vampires et Monstres de l'Imaginaire, is perfect for those fascinated by the supernatural. This small museum in Paris explores the lore of vampires and mythical creatures through art, artifacts, and interactive exhibits. Le Parc Astérix, well, not exactly weird. Le Parc Astérix is an unconventional amusement park inspired by the Astérix comic books. It offers a humorous take on ancient Gaulle, complete with roller coasters, live shows, and characters from the comics. So as you can see, France really does cater to everyone's vacation needs. From cheese and wine, snow and sun, ghost trains, and vampire lore, whoever you are, there's probably a vacation for you in France. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and let me know in the comments what your favorite vacation destination is. Au revoir!